Tri-State Freethinkers Podcast Lecture Series from February 3rd, 2016, Safer Sex, with speaker Lauren of Planned Parenthood. Let's talk about safer sex. Uh, we like to talk about safer sex at Planned Parenthood because, you know, uh, sexual activity, there's always some risk involved, but what's really important is about, you know, the people who are able to avoid that risk are still able to have really wonderful and uh, awesome experiences with safer sex. It's just that they know how to protect themselves. Something that our educators, and, and I should say, I, I do work in public affairs and advocacy with Planned Parenthood uh, because this was a, a briefer time right now. We, I didn't bring one of our health educators, uh, but they can go through all of it. They're amazing. Uh, they start each education uh, session, especially when there's young people, uh, but really all of them, with an anonymous box that students are able to write down questions or comments and put in a box so that they're able to ask their questions without you know, any worry about embarrassment. And then the health educator tries to include that answer into the session that she's talking about. And that's really important because young people need a place to ask their questions. Sex is confusing, it can be scary, especially for young people, especially if you're coming from a home where people aren't talking about it. How are we doing? Are we hearing me? All right, sorry. <laughs> uh, and, and also, sex can be you know, amazing and really great, and we want young people to experience that. And, and also, make sure that it's inclusive, something that Planned Parenthood brings beyond the kind of security of being learning from someone who's not your regular teacher all the time or maybe a parent uh, is, and, you know, their students feel more comfortable talking to us because we're coming in, we're teaching them, um, we're there for a few days, we have the information, we're from a trusted name, but then we leave and, you know, they're able to uh, move on with the, with the information. Uh, but what's really great about, I don't know, just like, went through, like, over my head, I'm, like, looking at my, like, special award, enjoying it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I'm very excited about it. Is, uh, so, Planned Parenthood uh, health educators, they come in and teach, and students are able to ask all of their questions, and it's really important because our sex education uh, curriculum is all-inclusive. So, it includes people who are interested in the same sex or different sex or both, or maybe they're not interested in sex at all. It includes going through puberty. A lot of the questions that our health educators get are very basic questions about, you know, does my genitalia, like, is that normal? Does it look okay? Like, what is this liquid? You know, so stuff that you kind of hope that 14-year-olds would already know, um, but, you know, Part of, I think, something that we experience in society is that, uh, especially in America right now, it's not always accessible to talk about sex safely. And Planned Parenthood also provides uh, sex education for all ages. So age appropriate, depending on the school or the community group that you know allows us to come in. We could start from kindergarten. We usually start somewhere in junior high or high school. But it's age appropriate, it's medically accurate, it's backed up by data and science, and therefore it's always changing. You know, we ha our health educators, um, they are professional public health educators, and they also go to continuing education and training throughout the year, uh, and that's a Planned Parenthood-wide standard that's also held up by like our healthcare providers. So as new uh, information and new names and better inclusiveness comes out, better data, we're able to back that up with our education. And then people who you know, bring us into their classrooms or like I said, community halls or uh, individual families can bring educators in as well. But because Planned Parenthood has been under attack for a long time and our funding is cut in basically every way that the state government can figure out, a lot of our health education programs now are for cost. Usually we like that to be covered by like a school district or an organization that has that money, but I, that's just something that I have to include is that um, most of our education uh, is for a cost as well. 
uh, but you know, also based on what people need. But we do apply for grants, and those grants help pay for our health educators, for their education, for all of the work that they put into like creating the curriculum, making sure that it meets the community's needs. Uh, some of those grants are what's being under attack right now by the Ohio legislators. So when they're talking about defunding Planned Parenthood right now, what they're really talking about is defunding our education programs. One of the education programs that I'm really proud of, uh, for me, I came into this field because of uh, issues with sexual violence and sexual assault that you know I experienced and that my friends were experiencing, and we were really trying to figure out a way to like prevent you know, what was going on, especially um, with young people. Well, Planned Parenthood got the Violence Against Women Act grant and has a healthy relationships class that they right now are doing in Montgomery County and had every plan to expand it uh, throughout our 23 counties here in Southwest Ohio. Of course, this is the funding that they're right now targeting, but what our health educators are currently doing is going into classes and talking about uh, dating violence as well as bullying behavior, and not only just for the students, but for the teachers, how to um, kind of, what are the signs that this could be going on, and what are ways that you can bring it up with students or their parents uh, if it's necessary and able. Uh, and then also modeling behavior of what a healthy relationship really looks like, because just with talking about sex in general, not everyone has the um, experience of getting to see a healthy relationship uh, and what that looks like, what respect feels like, what it looks like to show respect, uh, how respect and love are connected, and just that entire piece, and giving uh, young people the option to ask those questions. Usually, our health educators come back all the time saying that they were you know, asked the question, like, how can I help my mom? you know, stop getting hit, or, you know, what do I do if someone's touching me and I don't like it? You know, these are very real issues that young people are dealing with, and uh, we need to be able to address them in a space that's safe for them. So that's what we do for healthy relationships. We also, um, as part of one of these federal grants, we work with young people who are coming in or are in the juvenile justice system or in foster care. We work with professionals in this uh, who work with those communities to make sure that um, safer sex education is kind of part of their overall professional and um, just their development. So a lot of times they're going to be leaving the justice center or um, they're, a lot of students or youth in foster care after they're 18, they don't have a place to go. So, you know, we try to like, make sure they have financial knowledge and uh, professional development. Uh, and so sex education is very m much included in that because when we're talking about uh, youth in the foster care or in um, the Justice Center, uh, they have much higher rates of sexual assault, of STDs, and um, they need that extra like education and access. So unfortunately, those programs that, it, that we're talking about are being cut. They're probably going to be cut next Wednesday. Uh, we, um, I guess the, so Kasich, the governor of Ohio is running for president and while doing that is still attacking women from New Hampshire. Uh, I think he thinks it'll help him in the primary or whatever and he you know, made the Senate passed the House version of their bill. The, they added an amendment that sounds like it's adding more money for infant mortality, which we all want. Uh, Ohio has a disastrously low infant mortality rate, and there needs to be more funding for it. But um, Planned Parenthood already runs programs in Northeast Ohio that are successful. They want to take that money and give it to uh, federally qualified health centers who probably could do a great you know, program, but it takes time, it takes money, it takes staff to put on these programs, including the health education programs that I was talking about. Uh, so they're, they have an amendment that's like shifting that money around so the House had to go back and vote on it. Uh, Democracy in Action is really fun, and I really recommend uh, you join us to experience it at some time. We expect they will vote on this on the 10th, 
and then it'll go to Kasich's desk where he's already said that he'll sign it. There's some great gifts on social media of him telling people in a New Hampshire town hall that he is definitely defunding Planned Parenthood and he does not care if they are disappointed about it. Unfortunately, whenever our lawmakers talk about how they're defunding Planned Parenthood, they usually in their, take their time for questions to talk about abortion, which Planned Parenthood is proud that we provide, uh, sex education, access to birth control. Everybody doesn't have the same access to that, and some people need access to abortion to make sure that they're able to live out the safe and happy lives that they deserve, and Planned Parenthood is committed to being there to provide that care. We also want to provide the education and the access to preventive health care for everyone so that they have the same access, uh, whether they want to prevent pregnancy or plan for it in the future. Either way, uh, the Ohio uh, government is set to take away the defunding, uh, set to take away our funding for education. So we will. Uh, remain open, our doors stay open. That's our new slogan uh, throughout Planned Parenthood, our doors stay open, and they will. And uh, I have promised my staff, um, I got a promotion, I'm the organizing director for Planned Parenthood Advocates of Ohio now. Uh, you will still see me around, I'm working out of Cincinnati, uh, but I am excited I'll be able to hire a new person who will be in Cincinnati as well, and you'll see that the actions that we take in Cincinnati will increase then. Uh, but we're gonna try to find some local victories or, or something just to, to get through until we uh, have some new lawmakers. So I hope you're all registered to vote wherever you live and uh, keep some of the stuff in mind. Yes, I understand that my whole life is just a blink of an eye. The history of the earth is with each moment that goes by. But this moment that I live you, it feels like time. Thank you so much.